our session tonight. This is our first ever introduction to Hive Keepers with a group of beekeepers. And Hive Keepers software generation two is incredibly new. It's only been it's only been out there for the last month or so, and we've really kept it quite to ourselves ultimately and only shared it with a small group of people as we learn and understand a little bit more about it. But um, tonight it brings me great pleasure to give you a bit of an introductory uh, look through what it's all about. Now, I'm sure this won't be uh, perfect. I'm sure there's a few things that um, I need to go away and look at and improve. We know that there's a few uh, issues still to tidy up. Um, but in saying all of that, we think we're actually providing something that's fairly reasonable and giving you a good opportunity to, to be able to keep track of your bees a whole lot easier than you normally would have been able to. So without much further ado, I'm going to get into it and show you what this is all about. And please feel free to add any comments in the uh, chat and we'll uh, work through that as we go. But as I said, tonight's just a very basic overview. We'll show you a little bit of the functionality and hopefully that helps you get started and makes it a little bit easier for you. So at the moment, you should be able to see that I've got the Hivekeepers website up and running. So here we are just at hivekeepers.com. And this is our normal website where you can access any information relating to uh, Hivekeepers. But up here in the top menu, you can see that under Smart Record Keeping, it says Beekeeper Login. And we've put that there so it's nice and simple for you. It'll open a fresh browser and we'll give you the opportunity to either sign up for an account if you haven't had the chance before, or sign in if you've already previously created an account. Now, I will just mention here that some people listening to this may have already had a Hivekeepers account from the last few years. And if you've had one, you will need to create a brand new login for this particular account. Given the software is so different to the previous one and we've changed it and made so many modifications, the reality is, is we weren't able to have one flow neatly into the other. It just wasn't possible. But the good news is now with the way that our database is set up and our system is set up, it's really easy for us in the future to not have any of those issues of, I suppose, making our software obsolete. We, we just simply won't have those issues. So tonight, I'm going to assume you've already been able to sign up and you've been able to create a user account and we're just going to sign in. This particular account will already have a little bit of data in it but that just helps me move through a few things a little bit quicker. But the first page that you'll always come to is this particular page here. Now, it's really important to note that I'm on a desktop computer tonight. If you were to do this on your smart device, just logging into the same place, it would look quite different. By example, and I'm just, I've got a way I can carefully show you this. By example, if I was to change that view, it would look something like what you see central to the screen there now. And it, it's essentially, it's just reorganized everything, hasn't it? You can see it all looks a little bit different. It's just been reorganized. And that's what it might look like on your smart device. So if you're used to doing this sort of thing on your smart device, it's actually optimized for that as opposed to a desktop, but you can use both quite happily. Tonight, I'm just gonna use the desktop because that's what I'm on at the moment. And that's a little bit easier. Perhaps next time we'll do it just on the smart device so that we can uh, really give that the time it needs as well. So here you are, you're on your dashboard. There's a few key little tips just at the top here of the best way to get started if you're brand new at this, from creating an apiary, check your inventory and how to add a hive. And what those that will do will link you directly to that part of the software for you. If you're here for your first one or two times, it helps you get started. You can see that here on this dashboard, it already shows we've got six apiaries and one hive. Uh, it shows you here, if you look around on your, it can show you here, you can zoom in, move around, you can see where your different apiary locations are. You can see the five kilometre foraging radius around there, around each location. And I'm just doing that by holding the control key on my computer and just moving that around. And you can see also there's a little calendar here, which just helps you with uh, remembering where you're at, what what the date is and what what the what, what time of year it is, I suppose. And down below, there's a few um, other additional points about what uh, the last 10 activities that have occurred, occurred and hives that haven't been visited for at least 30 days. Um, and we've made it a little bit nice to look at. Over here on the right, there's a bit of a gallery. If you've been saving images of any sort um, by directly putting them in as an upload media, you'll start to get a bit of a display here running down the side. So that's just, that's just to lighten it up and make it a little bit more visual. 
So that just gives you the real basics of the dashboard layout. Overall, there's a lot to this. The first step though that I wanted to really show you is just a quick overview of the menu. Here in the menu, you can see, you can always come back to this dashboard page. The My Bees page really shows you your apiaries and your hives in a, in a visual sense so that you can actually see them um, and get a feel for what they may look like. HiveSense is our new part of our platform where we're going to look at sensor-enabled beehives in the near future. I can show a little bit more of that later, but that's probably not going to be able to be used by many people just yet. But that's the portal where people can look and see their beehives which have sensors put in them. The map page will show you, that's where you can see the map on a full screen. Reports is a hugely important area so we can look up all your previous data and information that you've stored. Activities is where you'll be able to add activities from observations, actions and inspections. And we're really clear on those three different points and I'll explain them a bit more in detail later. We've got a calendar and a timeline which helps you view in chronological order and in, in, a, in a calendar format, the different events that have occurred. So when you've logged one of those activities, we've got the gallery, a way to upload media nice and easily. We've got an inventory page. For those that are familiar with our HiveBuddy service, we've got a direct link into HiveBuddy. We've got a weather feature and we've got some help down the bottom there. Now, at this early stage, the help section probably doesn't provide as much guidance as we'd like. It's really focused on the old version of the software. And that's because whilst we've still been making a few little changes here with the, with the new version, we've been waiting till things settle down before we provide the proper support that we know is important as part of this. But this session tonight is absolutely part of that and, and why we're here. Anyway, the most important thing that I want to do is take you through what I believe will be the most common steps that someone would want to go through to start using the software. Now, it doesn't matter that I've already got some apiaries and hives put in here because the process will be exactly the same. So as per the top of the page here, it says create an apiary. Right now, it's just as easy to click that button. <coughs> Pardon me. It will take you to the maps page that we talked about earlier. And you're going to have the opportunity to be able to zoom in. We might head up your way somewhere, Lorraine. I won't go too too close, but we might go here into, into the National Park and choose this as the location of where that particular apiary is. You can also be up here and actually type in that location. That's quite easily done. So it might be, um, let me spell that right, Eagles Road in Harcourt. And in it comes and gets you a nice close-up view of that. And what's nice about it is a nice big foraging radius around that area there, which helps you get a bit of an understanding of how far it might be that your bees may travel. Although this range here is quite large. Since I'm here right now, we might drop an apiary here in the Great Alexander Regional Park. So once you click create an apiary, you can literally put in your details. It will have an address there. It'll have a latitude and a longitude. And of course, you can upload a photo. It's lucky I've got some prepared here early, earlier for you. Now, because we're using an internet browser for this, when you click save, it just might take a moment. If you're looking at the top here, you'll see it's just thinking for a moment. <clears throat> it's just uploading the information. And you can see in the top right here, it shows that that's been created successfully. And here is our National Park apiary. You see the little yellow tab that's just here. You can hide and show that as you need to. But what you'll have here is the next bit is you can then put hives here. If you look out on the right hand side here, you can see that there's a nice add hive button that's uh, flagged for you. But there's going to be one little issue, but I'll show you that as we go. So we're going to go and add a hive and this comes to our hive builder. And I'm almost certain that some of you have got to this step before, have put information in and it hasn't quite worked, but let me show you why. So I'm going to call this hive Simon because that's just easy. I'm going to select the type of hive. And at this stage, there's only three types of hives that we, we sort of refer to here. It's got a lid. It's got one honey super. Doesn't have an excluder. 
It has one brood box and, of course, it has a base. <laughs> now, the reason it's yes, no on some of those is because we're trying to get you familiar with the idea of tracking all your inventory so that you're, it's really clear to you what equipment you've got. So we're going to go to save right now and you're going to see a little issue appear. See up the top there, it says eight frames has empty inventory items. So for some of you, you might've gone straight to this to start to build a hive. But the problem is, is you've created an apiary, but you haven't put any inventory against that particular apiary. So I wanted to show you that because some people jump straight to it. And all we need you to do, and maybe the best place to always come back to at the moment is the dashboard is you then go and create your inventory. That's why we've tried to show you here with these three steps, This is these are the steps that you need to follow. So let's go create that inventory now. So here we are across all our apiary sites for, for your Hivekeeper's account, all the hives, all your apiary sites. This shows you here the inventory that exists. Now this would be all your different types of hives that you have. So overall, you've got three hive lids, three honey supers and so on. But we want to talk about one particular apiary and we're going to talk about the National Park one. And we're only going to have Langstroth eight frame hives out there. And if we go to check that, you'll see that there's actually none in that apiary or none allocated to that apiary. So that's why you couldn't build a hive in the first place. So all we're going to do here is using these buttons here, add what we know is the stock levels that we've got. I'm just going to I'm just going to quickly add a few here. It doesn't really matter at the moment for the sake of a demonstration, except I like nice even numbers. And I'm going to hit save. And as you can see up the top here, nice big green bold heading saying, yep, that's been successful. It's at this point that we'd want you to go back to your dashboard and follow those steps. We've created our inventory. Now let's add a hive. So it's taken you back here. It's already selected the National Park Apiary. If that happened to be one of the ones further down you wanted to select, all you need to do is click on it. So it's not complicated. If I go down to number three, I know there's already a hive there. But we'll go back up to National Park, given we want to talk about that one today. I like to minimise that. Let's build a hive. So we're going to click on the Add Hive button. Now, you saw me do this before. It's not too complicated. We know that we've got eight frame inventory available at that location and I'm going to go, go back here I'm going to get a bit excited and put two brood boxes on this one you can see the numbers here change as well just to help with your thinking these are very simplistic diagrams for now you're not going to see lots of different hive types other than other than the, the, the basic notes that we've got here for now um, that's just where we're starting off at the moment and this time we press save do you see how up the top now it said it's been successful and that's because we followed that three-step approach at the top of the dashboard page. So there we go. We've got one hive here visually just showing up that we've created. You can obviously create as many hives as necessary for your account. There's um, restrictions on depending on which account you do have. But um, at this stage, you should be able to go to the three dots here referencing this hive. And there's a range of different things you could do. Now, I want us to add some queen information. We won't be able to look at the queen information. I can't actually click that unless we've already added some queen information. So here we go. We're going to put some queen information in there. Oop, can't quite spell tonight. You can, you can even suggest here the year that that queen was from. If you've got very particular traits that comes with that queen that you think are really important. This is going to be relevant for, for different people. You might put in here a little bit about them. And this is just good to go and recall in the future. Maybe, maybe disease prone. And any special notes. Got this queen from Queensland bee breeders just go with me <laughs> and if you've been lucky enough to catch a photo you could always put a picture of a queen in there if you felt like it 
Some people get excited about that, so we want to know that that's an option that they can go with if they like. Just going to give that a moment to upload. Might just go with a different one of the images. I might just hit the save button and come back to it and see that it's actually saved there. Just might not be previewing properly for us. Greetings, Richard. Good to have you on board. Oh, thank you. Ah, great. So I did save that for us. And there's the information about that queen. Now, we all know how important it is to be saving and storing your information for uh, biosecurity and uh, record keeping purposes. So this really helps with that. And you know exactly which queen it is that you've got at the moment and any special details that are relevant to you. You can always update that photo if you were to get a better photo as time goes on. So great, now we know we can go and uh, look at that queen information. There's a few other things here I won't go through the full um, details with tonight. We can, well, I'll quickly show you, you can log a harvest. Just say last week we logged, we had a harvest and from this particular hive, we took eight kilograms of honey. It's as simple as that. We've just done that now. And as you can see up the top here, harvest created successfully. And I'll show you where you find that in a moment. And you can duplicate that hive literally press that now and, a, and another hive of identical uh, nature will appear next to it you can move it between different apiaries quite simply by checking one of these and saving i won't do that just now and obviously you can get rid of it as well if you want to mm. so that's some of the basics around the hive settings here so we've added the harvest i'm going to just hide all of that for a moment and bring you back to this menu here. So we've now set up an apiary. We've set up some hives. The logical thing now is to be able to record actions or activities that you've taken when it comes to that particular hive. What we've learned from four or five years of, of having software in this space in the past is there's a few really clear ex uh, ways that beekeepers do things. <laughs> We've narrowed that down here in looking at it, that there's observations, things you've seen, there's actions, things you've done, and inspections. And inspections is a more formal way a beekeeper has followed a process. Now, for many people, following an inspection, they might call every time they go to the hive following an inspection, but an inspection really applies that you're following a methodical path. And that's why we've, we've still got that here now. A full hive inspection, for example, is a group of observations and actions just in an ordered format. Now, you can go and do any of those observations or actions just on their own. But if you wanted to come about a standardised approach to record keeping, you would come in here to the inspections where we've narrowed it down for you to be able to make it a little bit easier. Now, not every one of these exists fully yet. A full hive inspection, you just get a little bit of a brief overview there of what each one of these includes. And I would suggest a full hive inspection only happens a few times a year, but you might make lots of observations. You might take lots of actions in between. The good thing here is, is you, you're not overwhelmed with so many options by every time feeling like you have to do a full hive inspection. Standard hive inspection is just a little bit smaller doesn't worry about all the other apiary conditions and the surrounds and what, what else is going on. It really just focuses on that, that, that particular hive. Sometimes you just want to report on the apiary itself. Don't need, I don't want to like record a whole heap of information here right now about the actual uh, beehives. I just want to report back about the actual apiary. For those that have more than one apiary, that can be important. We've also want to acknowledge the fact that sometimes it's actually just good to make um, an inspection from the outside of the hive. You don't have to always open the hive to want to just take some sort of a record to help form some sort of uh, trend data or some information going forward in the future. So we've put together there an external hive inspection. You can do a very simple Varroa check, uh, which is just, uh, again, following a process. 
if you've had a hive that has died, we want you to, like, we, we suggest rather that you record that information. And here is a very simple way of logging that. It's not at all uh, over the top. And there are a few others here. Healthy colony checklist, first spring inspection, winter pack down inspection. They're ideas that we have for the future that we haven't quite evolved to a point yet where we've, we've, we're opening them up to you, but we are learning how we can we can do better with that. So that just breaks down for you that there's observations, actions, and inspections. But just to like complete the circuit here, because I don't want to leave you without at least some valuable information, is we'll just have a look inside each of these just once. So an observation, for example, you can actually see here that there's a range of different levels. You can talk about the apiary, you can talk about the hive, you could talk very specifically about the queen, and then there's sort of a catch-all of the other things that don't fit in as neatly here. So we're again at the, at the National Park uh, apiary. We're going to be talking about Simon's eight-frame hive again, just the one. And here under apiary, you can go into a few details. So you can look at this here and go, well, today the apiary, and if anyone else is down, well, Probably the entire eastern seaboard of Australia would be wet and muddy at the moment. We have poor access, plenty of drinking water. The weather has been cold, constant rain, probably even going to say storms. And I'm not sure about you guys, but the wind has been unbelievable today. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad today. Unbel and it started calm, but it's just been um, awful now. And here's where you might just uh, make a few notes of plants that you saw in bloom. So that, I mean, you can always then add more down here. Um, and I'm just thinking of a scenario where you might have a uh, an apiary a little bit away from maybe your own home and driveway was wet and muddy, hard to drive along. Just, just a basic note that really is consistent with the with the notes further up. Now at this point here, you can upload an image. So um, I don't have a great image to go with everything I've said. So I'm just going to press the first picture that comes to mind, kind of irrelevant. And I just want to remind you, it will it it shows that it's sitting there now. And you can only, unfortunately, at the moment you can only upload one image per um, observation at the moment. We'll change that down the track when you press save. Just again, looking up here, it does take a moment for that to save. So if you're thinking, oh, I've pressed the buttons, why isn't it happening? Give it a moment because it needs to there you go. There's that note. Mm. It just needs a moment to do the upload. Is there a limit on how big the image can be? Yeah, there are. I don't recall it off the top of my head without like putting in a lot, one that's too large. It'll then tell us. Mm. Um, we did um, increase that a bit, but I've also got a temptation, Richard, to increase that a little bit more. You can put videos in there. You can put audio in there. But I do want to note that, like, we're not talking about 30 minutes of video. We're talking about no. maybe just short videos of showing something that was important. And with that one limitation that I've already mentioned is at the moment you could only attach one per report, which is clearly not enough. It's not that wasn't – that's just a short-term limitation that, that will be changed at some point. And – Without going through, I mean, I've shown you there how to upload an observation. Just show you a few of the other points in here. So you might just, uh, what else did you, what else did you observe? Again, thinking about things that you've seen. The hive was active. Entrance activity was busy. Actually, now it's slow because it's been terrible. If if you're the sort of person that gets as technical as this, you would have counted how many bees might have come and might have left the hive per minute. They were all pretty calm today. The odor was slightly mouldy the hive strength was appeared quite weak which i'm sure that lots of people are having troubles this year and we're really giving you the ultimate freedom here with a hive score so as you slide that back and forward i don't want you to think that we've got a preconceived idea of what constitutes healthy or not that is completely for you to decide so yeah, so I was going to yeah, because I was going to ask. I'm I'm a pretty newbie at this. Yeah, great, right? Yeah. And uh, there's that notion of hive strength, and uh, and that's a very subjective kind of view. It's awful, isn't it? Richard. Uh, so. um, what you would view as as um, normal or weak or strong will be completely different in on the day of the week that you're personally viewing it. So from a scientific mm. perspective, this is a really hard one to 
um, give guidance on. It just becomes down to your personal experience. And if you were to then mm. to uh, spend time with other beekeepers, you realise that their version of normal or, or strong or very strong will be different again. Um, and it'll const- that, that point that you raise will constantly challenge you and mm. you just need to be as consistent as you can personally. doesn't mean that you're right or wrong or others are right or wrong. But if you can apply a fairly consistent approach, then that's not a bad idea. That's, that's, that's the best that we can suggest there. Until right, perhaps, right. Richard, we have a really descriptive way of deciding what this is. But mm. we're a little bit reluctant to do that because we know our software is far reaching and it just doesn't serve beekeepers here in Melbourne, by example. And there's lots of different opinions and viewpoints of how that would look. Yep. It's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, yeah certainly. Is. Um, there's okay. also, you can put a colour flag against it if you believe that there's a certain colour scheme that you want to apply to, uh, to oh, hides. These are blue today. <laughs> it can be totally up to you. Um, that's just a, a, a value add. And then you can go through here and add all sorts of other um, other factors that relate to uh, the health of, of that hive. Diseases, yes. I saw some chalk brood. Again, Richard, here's another classic example. Well, what's your version of mild versus my version of mild versus Rachel's version of mild and Lorraine would all be possibly quite different. But mm. you will know what you've seen in the past and you will know how this feels. And most importantly, just start somewhere. Just start mm. somewhere. Um, you don't need to be, you're not right or wrong be just because you and I might have a different viewpoint. It's you being consistent about your record keeping over time. Mm-hmm. And you can always add more here. Yes, there's been some EFB getting around because of the weather. It's mild, but I certainly could see it. And under pests, so diseases, we're talking about obviously brood diseases and diseases of the honeybee. Pests, we're normally talking about something that is impacting the hive. Small hive beetle, yep, there's a few of them getting around. I think we'll see a few of them with this humid, warm summer that apparently is coming. And any other irregularity that you saw there, um, Yep, maybe there's a bit of mould because of the time of years meant that that's happening. So I'm conscious that, you know, this could take, you know, we could go through every single example of data that exists here, but I encourage you to spend the time to have a little bit of a look, um, see how it feels for you, see, see what seems right, and just use it as a point of reference for now. Uh, and all you can do is just practice and learn and see how, how it fits for you. And just note that change over time. Again, you can write your notes in here, upload an image, and then go with the save. You can also backdate it, and you can go and edit it. I just wanted to show you can put queen observations in here. I'm not going to read it all out. Um, and this, you can obviously talk about queen cells that you've found. Um, and any special traits that you noticed on the go this time. And just to check this last one. So you might have some other observations that you've made about equipment condition. And in, in any of these, you can go, well, no, the condition was quite poor. You probably noticed, and Richard, you sort of making the observation about the choices here. Mm. Under each one of these, uh, across the entire software, we've always tried to give you five options or five levels. Rather than yep. on one say yes or no, we try to give you five levels. Rather than on one give you 10 different levels and another one three, we've always tried to stay consistent with five to make it a repeatable pattern that you, you're starting to see. Mm. It's, uh, and, and this is just me being one of these odd one outs, right? It's assuming a, a, a standard type hive. And uh, so I'm, I'm using a top bar hive. So totally. that, that would make it a little bit different uh, in there. So um, absolutely, that uh, that is the truth. And at this stage, whilst we don't have a hive type that sits in the inventory that specifically would talk about a top bar hive, I don't think it makes it irrelevant to be able to no. still use the software in its current form. You just might have to be a little bit creative until we get to around to the point of being able to give you that option of different hive types, yeah. like you say. I might just backdate one of these. Save it so there's a few colourful reports. So I've just talked about observations now. Mm-hmm. I want to quickly show you in here actions just to show you the point of difference of what I mean there because we are doing things quite differently this time. 
I'm on autopilot a little bit, so you can always pull me up. So this is about things that you've done. Before we talked about things that you've seen, now here are things that you've done. Yeah, so much wind, we've had to clean up things, the like fencing and the gates, mowing, we've had to do all this work. Done a security check and an access check. Um, we brought new hives, some new hives in from our inventory. We haven't retired any, we might make some notes. But this particular hive, we did some treatments. So pick your, pick your favourite treatment. And again, this is probably not ideal here. We don't have a better approach here at this stage, but treatment level. For some, it might be one or zero is yes or no. Um, otherwise, you might just have a level of treatment that is, that is applied. We don't really have mm. a better way to do that in the short term. Um, we're looking at ways we can improve that and open to feedback. And it might be here that you've done some feeding, some sugar syrup, and we've put three litres of sugar syrup in, and any other actions that may come from that. And I'm just going to go back a little bit and hit the Save button so that my data looks good. Sound like a tree just fell over at my house. Hopefully that's not what's happened. So that's just the real quick introduction of action. And we talked before about inspection. Now, I just want to show you this once because if I go through this in too much detail, I'm sure it's going to uh, be a little bit over the top. Mm -hmm. I might just pick a standard hive inspection and I won't complete it, but I'll just show it to you to make a point. So you need to pick a hive for this. I'm keeping the same one. That's a busy hive being inspected a lot. <laughs> I might just put the date back a bit just for fun. And in here you'll see not only there are things that, we've observed but there'll be things that you've done as well so it's not just observations or actions it's observations and actions and as you go through you can you'll see that you can obviously still report on condition but you can also log actions as they've occurred so Again, you can add treatments, you can say what you've, um, what feeding you might have done and the like. So that's a fairly quick one on the standard hive inspection. That's like what you would normally do when you go out and have a quick look at the hives on a, you know, brief opportunity. You want to just be fairly quick, see what's going on. This is probably where you would come to to log an inspection. And again, I don't want to go through all of the different parameters there. That's for you to spend some time at, but I will save that. So I've just gone through observation, action and inspections. Now, there's a couple of ways you can go back to look at that because obviously why do you, why do, you do this in the first place? Like why do you want to take information down in the first place? Well, that's so you can review it later because mm. uh, I find I'm not very good at remembering what I've done in the past. I'm actually absolutely hopeless at it. So there are a few ways you can do this. I'm going to start by just showing you another item down here on this uh, menu, which is calendar and timeline. If you go to calendar, I'm just going to show them to you briefly. Here you can see, and it's all color coded, what's happened over time um, and what date. And at the moment, it's all hives and apiaries. I could just go and choose the one that we've just done, which obviously clears a few. And when you click on it, it'll take you to a version that is editable of that report. So right now, of course, it's not editable until I click the edit button, but this is where you would go to have a really quick look at that particular hive or apiary, if it was an apiary report, and go, what did I, what happened last time? Oh, last time, they were really slow around the entrance. There's a few bees moving around, coming and going. Their temperament was calm. Oh, that's right. It had a mouldy smell, and I only gave it a total hive score of 50. Let's look on. That's right. There was chalk brood. Wasn't happy about that. And I remember seeing some small hive beetle. That's right. And there was some mold in there. And this is your point of reference to be able to recall what that hive was like before you go there next time. So if tomorrow is a beautiful sunny day, something that I hope we get to experience again one day here in Melbourne. Um, not sure. But um, this is where you could go and go, okay, I remember what it was like last time I was there. But also if you need to, and I'll just show you this the once, you can go in and edit that report in the event that something wasn't done properly the first time. 
Um, sometimes you accidentally click the wrong thing, that happens. So that was the calendar view. But I'll just quickly show you the timeline view. And all this is, is just a, a view showing the dates as it's gone, going back in time. Actually, it's not really chronological at all there, is it? That's a bit odd. Yeah, it's a bit odd, isn't it? That's priceless. I think maybe it's doing something with the different types of um, uh, inspections. I'll have to look into why that doesn't do that. Or maybe <laughs> it was the date that they were entered as opposed to, or the order that they were entered in the last half an hour while I've been adding a whole lot of them. And therefore it's sorting for that as opposed to what we want. But you can go in here and if you've got, if you can imagine you've got lots of choices, you want to be able to get rid of some of them. And just, just see what's important to you. Uh, that, that looks better because before the one we're looking at just had had all of the ones that have been done. Now we're just showing the ones for Simon Simon's Hive. I will do a check on that though for you as to why it didn't show up properly. So the other thing to do here too, is that's one way to get to your report and have a little bit of a look at what you've done previously. Go ahead, Richard. Yeah, no, it's just saying it looks like it's showing the timeline in uh, from from right to left rather than right, uh, left to right. Yeah, and also, but also I think it's um, with what we were seeing before, there was some mm. November, some October, then some November, and it makes me mm -hmm. think that it's just sorting by the moment that the report was created as opposed to being selecting the date that yeah, I've applied yeah. on the report. So that's a, that's a bit of an easy fix, but I'm glad we've spotted it. The other one too is to look here under reports. Mm. Under reports, there's a whole range of different things. There's also some that we haven't quite got together yet, but time time will get us there. Most of the time, you're just going to want to look at apiary and hive reports. So here's a big long list. Probably see the same issue here, Richard. With oh no, it looks like it's chronological. That's good to see. So here is all of what we've done in in recent time. There was that standard hive inspection that I did just before. And there's two ways you can do it here. You can open that report like we saw before and you can come straight here. I'm not going to go into that. Or if you go to generate PDF, we'll just give it a moment. You can see it's just downloaded something on the side here. Let's open that up. And it gives you here a bit of a report on what that's all about with the details. And it cascades over to a few pages. If you didn't put data in, it still just shows as a blank field for now on here. So it's really whether or not that suits you and what you're doing. It's just a basic format to show that data at the moment. And again, as you'll probably see with virtually everywhere, if you're looking for one very specific thing, I just want to find that hive inspection I did once for um, the National Park Hive, Simon. I'm going to search for that. Uh, there it is. Open it up and off you go. So there's obviously filtering to help you work through that. The other report that's in here that I'm coming back to from what we discussed earlier um, is the harvest reporting. So when you've logged a particular hive with a honey harvest or a similar or other products, because lots of, lots of people get fancy and take all sorts of products out of their hives these days, but you can mm. see a simple chart that shows that tracking over time. Now, I haven't logged a lot of harvests here, but this just shows the one that we did a little bit earlier. Oops, trying to hover over it properly, showing 15 kilos of honey was taken out in November. That'll accumulate over time um, if, you've, if you've taken more in November, and it will just show uh, how that's gone over time. You can also turn any of these off that you want, that you don't want. Not that there's data in there for the others. So that's just a little representation of this year, this year in um, beekeeping and honey production. <clears throat> so there's only a few last little bits I wanted to show tonight because I realise there's a lot going on here. And for Richard and Rachel and others watching, it might pay to go back to the start of the recording just to see the inventory part and about how to set yourself up properly at the beginning. That is critical to see because without that part, you won't have a hive to even do any of this with in the first place. Mm. So we'll have this available to look back on um, by tomorrow morning. But down here, there's a few things. Firstly, if you're familiar with Hive Buddy, which I think all of you here tonight live would be, there's a direct link to get across to that. If 
There's also a weather page. Now we've gone to a fair effort to get this to work. There's a few things not quite perfect with it yet, but the data that's in here can be can be really local to you. Um, so let's choose Bendigo for tonight, just because we can. Let's update that, and it, it's got that up to date information for now. Now, if you look at the hourly, I'm not going to tell you what the issue is, but there's an issue on this page with the data. So just make sure in the very short term, while you're looking at the data, you just understand that the weather data is a little bit confused. But overall, what mm. when this when the weather data is fixed, this is actually a really comprehensive way for you to look at local weather. I'm sure you've got apps and other things that are relevant to you, but this comes down to a three kilometre by three kilometre grid for your area. You can be as specific as that if you put in the right address. So that's the hourly forecasting out. And then there's the daily showing you what's coming in the future. Um, and we haven't done a Thanks whole lot. Thanks to have uh, the, the sun and the moon confused. Um, well, that's showing for the time at the moment. And there's, uh, there's, a, few little, there's a few little issues with, with how those uh, show. If you want me to show you back here on the hourly, um, it's in, it, it's got AM and PM completely confused at the moment because it's not going to be 28 degrees at quarter past one tonight here in Bendigo. So it's just it's just out a little bit. It's only a problem I picked up today. But this sun, hours of sun per day, is something that I think is is probably uh, under, um, is not well understood or not well considered by beekeepers yet. And maybe we don't even look at it, but we noticed that we could show you this and that would help you sort of gauge the appropriateness of choosing a day to do an inspection or to see what the bees are like. If the temperature is reasonable, the wind's not too high, the rain's not a big deal, and you can see sun, that there's plenty of hours of sun, that's probably a good sign. Mm. So there's a little bit there about the weather. Um, it's a little bit of a work in progress, but that's sort of where we're up to there. And we don't have a whole lot yet in the help section for support. Tonight's video is the very first step helping out with that. So just to round off the last few parts, because I know, Lorraine, you've been super patient and listening really well there, thank you, is up here in the top, there's two buttons just to consider. Oh, actually, did you notice here that there's a tiny little home button? If you click anywhere on that logo, it'll always bring you back here to the dashboard. Um, so that's just a quick one. You don't always have to go up here to find that. You just go straight there. So up here in this top right corner, if you press that button there, it'll let you upload one of these. But ultimately, this is a taster of what's to come. We want to eventually have it so that that opens the, like that you can do exactly what this function is. But at the moment, it's just going to take you to the upload media section. We haven't got the smarts yet behind this to be able to take you straight to the camera to take a photo or straight to your camera to start videoing, straight to your audio recorder to start recording audio. That's, that's to come. But we've put that there as much as a placeholder as anything to show you what's coming um, down the track. But lastly, and probably not, not hugely important, is there's, there's a bit here about your profile. This really comes down to like value for you um, and recording information for you and just being aware of um, your membership. We don't personally do a lot with this information. Like we don't look into your account. We understand where everyone sits from a membership perspective, but we don't go and dive into your personal details. So we understand who is at what level of membership, and that's really um, all that we allow ourselves to do. <clears throat> You've obviously seen that there's different membership tiers that go with it. Um, for a lot of you, you'll be down this lower end anyway. Um, keep an eye out between now and when we launch this more officially for um, a good offer for the, those that sign up for the first in, in the first instance before the end of January. Um, and really, I think that's probably enough for tonight. Um, there's a huge amount there and the recording will be available for you to go back and have a little bit more of a look at. Um, I don't want you to um, be too overwhelmed, but I can't help but think that you probably already are. We don't promise perfection in any of this as yet. We've got a really robust system that sits behind it from a database and security perspective, but where we're, that's, that's somewhere where we would not compromise but where you might still find that in the odd occasion, 
it's just not as intuitive as you felt. Well, we're interested to hear that, so please let us know. Or you might think that, no, it should have followed a different sequence or there's these options that are not available. The only way we can get better and improve is we, is we slowly get that feedback. And in fact, I used to have it that when you went to the help website, you could log that information. I think I've got that disabled at the moment. I'll make sure we get that back up and running so that you can. The last thing I just wanted to say, um, Lorraine heard me say this at the beginning, is tonight I've shown this to you on desktop version. For a lot of you, I would suggest you're probably using a um, smart device and it works really nicely on a smart device. So I'll keep it at that for now. But everything is the same. The functionality is the same. And you'll just find that the layout will be a bit different. It's actually been designed to work in this mobile responsive environment before it was on a desktop. So what you see here will end up being much more pleasant and user friendly in this particular use case um, when you're using a mobile than, than so much on the desktop. So I can't do two fingers when right. I've got the computer mouse. <laughs> but um, hopefully that just gives you the confidence that maybe um, everything will still be there. You just might need to look for it ever so slightly differently. Um, next time I might run one entirely just on the mobile responsive version and actually use my phone and sync that up so you can see that. Um, but otherwise everything is it's still all there. You've just got to realise it just might look ever so slightly differently. Can I share one last thing with you? Have you got time for one more thing? Yeah, sure. Because this is new and... It's kind of exciting and it's a real tease. So here's HiveSense. HiveSense is our hardware that's coming uh, out in next year. And our hard, let me just pick the right one. Our hard, this is a representation of some, some sensor enabled beehives that we've got. These units are actually not inside the beehive at the moment. They're just sitting um, on our benches in our lab, just Bench, we're bench testing, that's what they call that, bench testing the devices before they go into beehives. But we're extremely excited next year to be able to bring very straightforward sensors to beehives. Now, Richard, unfortunately, um, they will be aimed at eight frame uh, Langstroth hives to begin with. Our very first, we can't choose everything in the first instance, but they'll be aimed for um, the Langstroth setting initially but we're looking at temperature and humidity inside the hive and weight change over time. Um, and that's pretty thrilling. And maybe I can show you a little bit of the data that comes with that. I might have to, I can't remember which one now is the better one to show you. So to be able to track and see the temperature and humidity over a period of time can really start to help you understand what's going on from a health and wellbeing perspective in your hive. So you can see this is just a basic diurnal pattern here. Now, if it was inside a beehive, you would expect a fairly consistent internal temperature. So yeah. that lighter orange line would be fairly flat whilst still seeing a huge fluctuation in the daily temperature for outside the beehive. It would be similar with humidity. So you can see that we've maxed out the humidity on a few occasions. We've had some interesting weather, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Some of these are actually based outside, so... Um, and then there's the weight mechanism as well. And we don't have one of these devices set up to show you weight. We've had them in our other beta testing units, um, but that will also show here. And it's probably the weight that gives you the most interesting data at the moment so that you can really see, like right now, if you, had a, um, if you could weigh your hive over this last week or two, you'd be able to really understand the, where your stores are at, your honey stores are at, and how those bees are going given the population would be increasing and that uh, the cold weather is preventing them from getting out and about. So I just wanted to finish on that. Um, in a moment, I'm just going to stop recording, but um, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming along and uh, listening in and asking your mm -hmm. questions. I do appreciate that. And for those that are watching the recording um, after the fact, Simon at hivekeepers.com if you've got comments or thoughts or suggestions. And that goes right through for, from now for a long time. We've got a lot on our plate, but we do try and make sure we respond to everyone um, as soon as we possibly can because we're building this for beekeepers and wanting this to be useful and productive and meaningful for beekeepers. Thank you so much for coming along. Um, I really do appreciate your time, and I'll hang back for those that are still on the call just for a few more minutes, but um, I'll leave the recording at that. Thanking you.